Pinterest. I am down in the Mud Creek Kitchen today for our virtual um, Pinterest art, art class for this week. I'm sad not to see you guys in person this week, but hopefully we'll be all back together next week. Um, so for today's lesson, you're gonna need a few supplies. You're gonna need a paintbrush, and you can just use a paintbrush from like a watercolor set. Any paintbrush will do something kind of small like that. You're gonna need pencil, an ink pen, black. You're gonna need some coffee grinds. So you're gonna need a cup of just fresh coffee grounds and a cup of coffee grinds with some hot water in it. And this is what we're gonna use for our paint today. So if you don't have coffee at your house, maybe check with the neighbor, see if they have some coffee and grinds that you can borrow. I'm gonna tilt this down so you guys can see my paper. Okay, so our inspiration for this project is tree bark. Mine kind of also look a little bit like a tortoise shell, so you could kind of think about either one as your inspiration. But you're gonna need a piece of blank um, white computer paper. And you're gonna start with pencil and you wanna draw really lightly because this first line you're gonna erase. So you're just going to start in the center of your paper and draw a really light spiral across your paper. You guys can see. Okay, this line is eventually going to be erased, so it doesn't need to be very dark. But what you're going to do from here, starting in the middle, you're going to draw a squiggly line on the outside edge of your spiral. So starting here in the middle, and this line I can draw a little bit darker. So I am drawing a squiggly line and I wanna make sure that sometimes I get close to my pencil, first pencil line. Sometimes I have small squiggles, sometimes I have big squiggles, sometimes I get close to the line, sometimes I go out. You want a lot of nice variety with this. Remember our inspiration is tree bark. So if you were to go outside and look at the bark on a tree, you would see a lot of variety. Sometimes your squiggles can be sharp. Sometimes they're smooth. So you can change it up a little bit. If you run out of uh, space on your paper, you can just run right off the edge, just like I did. So I'm gonna pick back up over here. Ran off my edge again. And back over here. Okay, so once you've done that side, then you're gonna come back to where you started and continue your squiggles on the opposite side of the first pencil line that you drew. Remember to make sure that your lines come close. Sometimes they come nice and far out. There can be smooth squiggles and sharp ones. I'm gonna do a couple little sharp ones right here. And some smooth ones. And I'm gonna continue on until I get all the way out. Okay, so now I can come back and erase that first really light pencil mark that I drew. Round and round. Don't get dizzy while you're doing it. And the great thing about this project is it smells really good while you're working. If you like the smell of coffee, which I do. Okay, so now your paper should look something like this. And so you can kind of start to see a little bit of a design that you would see on the side of a tree with a nice squiggle lines. Okay, your next step is to take this squiggle and start to divide it into some sections inside of your, your squiggle lines. So I'm going to draw another line right beside, following the same curves of my squiggle. And then every so often I'm gonna draw a line coming across. 
like this to divide it into some different sections, okay? And then I'm gonna continue on mimicking the curve of my outside and then every once in a while coming across and matching back up. And I'm gonna repeat that, come across. This one, I'm gonna make it a nice long section all the way to there. And matching back up. So you can see, I'm now dividing it into smaller sections. And I'm gonna continue on until I get it divide it out all the way to my outside of my spiral, okay? So it will look, here's one that I've done a little bit more on. Some of your spirals may be nice and wide like this. You can also do a tight spiral like this one where I've got more on it. Just make sure as you're doing your spiral, your first one, that you leave enough space between your lines that you can come in and add in your sections. Okay, so once you have your sections all created, your next step is to take your black pen and very carefully trace back over your pencil lines. And any black pen will do fine for this as long as it's not an erasable pen. You can also use an ultra fine point Sharpie if you have one of those available at home. That works too. You just have to be careful not to smear your ink as you go. So watch your hands, the palm of your hands as you work that you don't smear on top of it. Try to stay right on top of your pencil lines if possible, but if you go outside of them a little bit, that's okay. You can come back later and erase any pencil lines that are showing. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on until I get all of it traced in ink, okay? Once I have it all traced in ink, my last step is to paint it. Okay, so we're gonna use coffee to paint. So I have two containers. I have one container that I have some coffee grinds down at the bottom and I put some hot water. I'm gonna use the other end of my brush just to stir it up. What I'm looking for is the coffee grinds to stain the water to give me a nice kind of brownish watercolor effect. And then I also want a cup of dry coffee grinds. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those in a minute. Okay, now we're gonna start painting in the inside of my shapes. So dipping into my brown coffee watercolor, I'm going to paint inside, going slow so that I can try to stay inside those lines. I wanna try to keep this outside line white, so I'm not gonna get watercolor on that. Okay, I like to kind of paint like two sections in at a time. And you can see right now, I'm just getting like a nice light brown. But we're fixing to make that a little bit more intense. If your pen bleeds a little bit with the white, that's okay. That kind of helps create a neat effect as well. Okay, so once I get two sections painted in, then I'm gonna take my coffee grinds and get a little pinch and sprinkle those on top of the wet areas. Just a few grinds like this. And what's gonna happen is when it hits that water, it's gonna react and start to leave a more intense color in that section. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave those right there and go ahead and start painting my next two sections. You wanna work two sections at a time 
so that your water is still wet so that it can react with the coffee grinds. If for some reason your sections are drying before you get to it, if you have a really big section, you can kind of work in smaller sections if needed. You just want to make sure that it stays wet. All right. Okay. I'm going to take my coffee grinds, get a little pinch again, and there may be some areas that you really want to get a lot on. So you can vary that. Some areas may be a little bit lighter, some areas a little bit darker. Okay, and you're gonna continue this until you get all the way to the outside of your spiral with all of your little sections painted in, okay? Once that's dry, then you can knock off any of your extra um, uh, coffee grinds, the dust of it, but you wanna make sure that it sits and it's nice and dry, okay? So you're gonna just work on the inside sections all the way around your spiral, and then the last step we will do back together in class. Let me know if you have any questions, and I can't wait to see all of the neat pictures and designs that you guys create.